Hey folks, this is Kalani. With the public test realm finally up, we can all hop on and start testing patch 8.2. And let me tell you, so far it's been a lot of fun. If you don't mind too many spoilers and want to get your hands dirty, this might be one of the best public test realm patches we've had in a very long time. You can tell they were holding onto this as long as possible because most of the stuff is already in there, ready to play around with, including every Heart of Azeroth essence that we know about. It seems like Sloot did a great job sneaking the essence effects out because he got all 21 abilities that we'll be getting in patch 8.2, but that was only the effects of most essences. Now that it's on the PTR, we have animations to look at and we even know where all of them come from. So let's hop right in because we have quite a few abilities to get through. As a quick note, these will be in order of DPS with general stuff first, then healing essences and finally tank essences. Some of them are spec specific obviously and others have special effects that change depending on your class or spec, so keep that in mind. Four ranks of each essence are available and as you go from rank 1 to rank 2 and then to rank 3, each essence will gain more effects and abilities as well as general power overall, while rank 4 will provide a special upgrade to the visual effects. We can't test any of those out sadly but we can have a look at everything else. I'm going to go over the actual abilities fairly quickly because we covered those in a previous video so feel free to pause the video to read the entire text and ability if you want to but also keep an eye on the essence effects of the different ranks as they appear on screen. The first essence we have to look at is Azeroth's Undying Gift. This is a damage reduction cooldown with an armor proc on the minor power. You can first collect this source from a weekly PvP war chest in Season 3 or later, so you'll need to take part in enough PvP to get a weekly chest. Rank 2 of this essence is obtained by reaching 1000 plus rating and then claiming a weekly PvP war chest. The Rank 3 requires you to reach Challenger and then claim a weekly PvP chest. And the fourth rank, the legendary version of this essence, requires you to reach Gladiator and then open a weekly PvP war chest. Blood of the Enemy is our next essence. This is a burst of AoE with a crit buff applied to anything that gets hit. This one is going to be very useful in Mythic Plus for sure. But this essence comes from the Battleground Initiate achievement in Season 3 or later. Rank 2 comes from the Battleground Brawler achievement in Season 3 or later. And Rank 3 comes from the Battleground Master in Season 3 or later. So Battlegrounds all the way through for this one, even Rank 4 comes from Battleground and Brawl wins in Season 3 and 4 so that one actually sounds like a random reward. The Engine of Ceaseless Progress is a crazy source of haste, crit, and mastery buffs. This thing can ramp up your secondary stats extremely quickly. The first rank comes from completing the new dungeon, Operation Mechagon. Rank 2 comes from combining Ceaseless Gears from King Mechagon, so you might have to kill the last boss a few times to try and get that one. Rank 3 comes from combining Progression Sprockets from King Mechagon, so I guess kill him a few more times. And Rank 4 comes from Operation Mechagon Hard Mode which basically just confirms that the new dungeon will have a hard mode and you'll get a cool reward for completing it. Essence of the Focusing Iris is a laser of Azerite energy which looks pretty awesome, and the first rank comes from completing a mythic plus 4 key or above and looting your weekly cash in season 3 or later. It's pretty easy to guess how this one progresses. Rank 2 comes from doing a plus 7 or above and looting your weekly chest. Rank 3 comes from the Keystone Competitor achievement, which is probably for a plus 10 key in time. And the Rank 4 comes from the Keystone Master achievement, which is probably a plus 15 key in time. Both of those in Season 3, of course. Guardian of Azeroth summons an Azerite elemental which hurls shards of Azerite at your enemies. Pretty cool, but it does have a hefty cooldown. Rank 1 comes from Queen Ashara on normal difficulty. I can't see where rank 2 comes from right now because the correct item isn't available on the PTR, but rank 3 comes from combining reliquaries from Queen Ashara. I guess this kind of thing is just an item we collect over and over again with multiple kills, and then we can combine them when we have enough. And rank 4 comes from Queen Ashara on mythic difficulty. Memory of Lucid Dreams is a resource generation cooldown and it swaps for everyone. Shadow Priest is Insanity, Holy Priest is Mana, Rep Paladins are Holy Power, you get the idea. Rank 1 comes from your weekly Island Expedition quest and the treasure map. Rank 2 comes from something relating to your follower mission table, not too sure what that is without being able to look at it properly. Rank 3 comes from another treasure map and more mission table stuff. And Rank 4 comes from mysterious treasure map missions. Another random reward no doubt. 
Purification Protocol is a large beam AoE explosion thing. Looks pretty cool and does a lot of damage. Rank 1 comes from the Rust Bolt Resistant faction at Honored. Rank 2 is the same rep but at Revered. Rank 3 is available at Exalted, no surprises there. And the Legendary Rank 4 can be earned from the Paragon chests of the Rust Bolt Rebellion. So even if you get to Exalted, there's still a reason to farm rep with these guys, it seems. The Crucible of Flame is a short cooldown Azerite Fireball which ramps up in damage the more times you use it. This one comes from the introduction quests for the new Heart of Azeroth system. Rank 2 requires Heart Level 54 and another quest. Rank 3 requires Heart Level 58 and another quest. And the Rank 4 version requires Level 70, which is the cap when this patch goes live by the way, and yet another quest. So easy to obtain as long as you keep up with your Heart Levels. The Unbound Force is a quick, single-target nuke which deals crazy damage if it crits. Rank 1 comes from the Unshackled reputation, that's the Najjatar rep for the Horde, so just replace that with Anne Cohen for the Alliance at Honored. Rank 2 comes from the same rep but at Revered. Rank 3 needs you to get Exalted, and Rank 4 is from Paragon Boxes again. Hopefully they don't have a terrible drop rate. Vision of Perfection has a chance to activate one of your cooldowns randomly while you're in combat and comes from the initial chapters of the Nazjatar War campaign. Rank 2 comes from further Nazjatar content, which we're not too sure about yet. Rank 3 is even more Nazjatar content and Rank 4 comes from completing the Nazjatar Zone achievement. World Vein Boon plays around static shards of Azerite that pop up out of the ground and provide you with primary stats while you stand close to them. The first rank comes from a vendor in Nazjatar, rank 2 comes from the very same vendor in Nazjatar, and surprise surprise, rank 3 comes from the same dude in Nazjatar. This might be related to some special currency or more reputation, but rank 4 comes from war mode bounty targets in Nazjatar. So that's a really interesting twist there. If you don't play with war mode on, say goodbye to rank Rank 4 World Vein Boon. We're on to the healer essences now. Artifice of Time creates a damage and healing absorb on your target, and then whatever gets absorbed is dished out over time. This comes from the Battleground Initiate achievement in Season 3. Rank 2 comes from the Battleground Brawler achievement, Rank 3 comes from the Battleground Master achievement, and then Rank 4 comes from Battleground or Brawl Wins in Season 3 and 4, so the same as one of the earlier essences. Lifebinder's Invocation provides a heal over time effect which blooms if the target takes damage. This one is a mythic plus dungeon essence. So the first rank comes from doing a plus 4 or above and picking up your weekly chest. Rank 2 comes from a plus 7 or above key and looting your weekly chest. Rank 3 comes from the Keystone Competitor achievement and rank 4 comes from the Keystone Master achievement. The Ever Rising Tide is a short cooldown which gives your heals a bit of a boost, but prevents mana regen for the duration. The first rank comes from your Nazjatar reputation at Honored, rank 2 comes from the same rep at Revered, rank 3 will need you to get Exalted, and rank 4 comes from the Paragon Chests of your Nazjatar reputation. The Well of Existence plays around with your overhealing and applies that overhealing in a variety of ways. It's also another reputation essence, but this one is from the Rust Bolt Rebellion. Again, pretty straightforward. The first rank is available at Honored, the second rank requires Revered, the third rank will need Exalted, and the legendary rank will come from the Paragon Reputation boxes. Vitality Conduit allows you to siphon life from one ally to another. Thankfully, it always picks the highest health ally within 30 yards, so you shouldn't kill anybody with this. This one is another Queen Ajara essence, so rank 1 comes from Queen Ajara on normal, rank 2 comes from Queen Ajara on heroic, which is the rank we were missing for the earlier essence, so I guess that's where rank 2 will come from from the Guardian, and rank 3 will be from collecting items from Queen Ajara. Rank 4 comes from Queen Ajara on mythic difficulty, so it looks like it's going to pay quite a little bit to be a mythic raider next patch. And last but not least, we have the tank essences. Up first is the Aegis of the Deep. This is a damage reduction and versatility essence which comes from the Najjatar reputation. Quite a few overlaps here, but that makes a lot of sense with them being for different roles. So rank 1 comes from Honored, rank 2 will come from Revered, rank 3 will need you to grind up to Exalted, and rank 4 comes from the Paragon Chests of that reputation. 
Anima of Life and Death is an AoE essence which sacrifices your health to deal damage to enemies around you, and this one is a Mythic Plus essence. So the first one is from a plus 4 weekly chest, rank 2 is from a plus 7 weekly chest, rank 3 is from the Keystone Competitor achievement, and the legendary rank 4 requires the Keystone Master achievement. That one is probably a good Mythic Plus essence though, so I guess at least one of these makes sense. The Nullification Dynamo is a magic damage absorb shield, both on a cooldown and a passive, very useful for those magic damage encounters, and this one is a Rust Bolt Rebellion reputation reward. You know the drill by now, rank 1 comes from Honored, rank 2 comes from Revered, rank 3 comes from Exalted, and rank 4 will come from the Paragon chests tied to the reputation. Up next is the Sphere of Suppression. This one is an AoE that reduces movement speed of anyone around you and reduces the damage they deal to you. This one is a Battleground Essence, so rank 1 comes from the Battleground Initiate Achievement, rank 2 comes from the Battleground Brawler Achievement, rank 3 comes from the Battleground Master Achievement, and rank 4 comes from Battleground and Brawl Wins. That one could look really cool as a Legendary. And the very last essence we have to check out is the Touch of the Everlasting. This one doesn't really have a cool animation, which is a bit disappointing, but it is a free get out of jail free card for your tanks. This essence also is another Queen Ashara award, so rank 1 comes from normal, rank 2 comes from Queen Ashara on heroic, rank 3 comes from items looted from Queen Ashara, and rank 4 comes from Queen Ashara on mythic difficulty. You can see a tiny swirl of Azurite around your character if you proc the death thing, but that's probably the least exciting animation of the lot. So, as you can see, you can get essences from Battlegrounds, from Mythic Plus, from the new raid, from the new dungeon, reputations with factions in both new zones, and there's even one tied to island expeditions in the follower mission table. The quests that I've done relating to the Heart of Azeroth also send you to places in the world that we haven't visited in quite a while to make sure Azeroth doesn't come apart at the seams. We're finally stitching some of her wounds back together and gaining quite a bit of power at the same time. I've actually loved the story so far in Patch point two, so I hope you enjoy it when you get around to it. If you want to test out any of these new powers on the PTR, I would recommend you do so soon. Right now, all of the ranks and essences, apart from the legendary ones, are available at a vendor, so you can play around with everything right now for very little effort. In a few weeks, they're going to wipe the PTR clean and get rid of that vendor so they can see how things go with us acquiring the essences naturally, aka the long way. So you won't be able to test all of the powers as easily as this again. Just something to think about. What do you think of the sources of essences now that we can see exactly where everything comes from? What about the animations that go along with these new powers? Leave all your thoughts in the comments section below. Personally, I think a lot of them are really cool and shiny, and they all follow the same kind of colour scheme, the blue and gold tones of Azerite, which is a nice touch. I can't wait to see what the legendary effects look like, but that's all for now. A big thank you to all of our supporters over on Patreon. You can see their names floating by on screen. If you want to join these guys and gals, you can find a link in the description below. Remember to leave a like just below the video before you leave, and if you want to see more, make sure to subscribe. But apart from that, thanks for watching, folks. Good luck and have fun, and as always, I will see you next time.